Next, the Kling brothers bring the ghost lab to the place where Rock was born. Shreveport Municipal Auditorium, baby. Oh, oh. And some say, never really died. Is this a hot spot of paranormal activity? They saw the light. They saw the light. Right here and can a new approach bring an old building back to life? When was the energy level the highest? Here? The early 50s. The idea of parallel universes, you have to come up with real tests. And later, the Myrtles Plantation is known as the most haunted home in America. It's saying something, dude. The team cast their electronic net to separate fact. Who's back there? From legend. It is ice cold right here. That's right here, dude. We are the Kling Brothers, and we believe that science holds the key to unlocking the secrets of the dead. We formed an investigation team called Everyday Paranormal. Our mission, visit the most haunted places in America, find evidence, and test new theories to probe the existence of the afterlife. This is Ghost Lab. San Antonio, Texas native Brad Kling and his brother Barry are just a couple of everyday guys. Brad is an IT consultant and Barry teaches special ed at a local school. But ever since a life-changing encounter nearly 20 years ago, the Kling brothers have been on a mission. July 6, 1990. I was on a family vacation in Gettysburg, Pennsylvania. It was broad daylight. We were on our way out of town in my dad's truck. I look over into the field and I see this small group of Union soldiers just walking through the field. I thought they were doing a reenactment, so I told my dad to stop the truck. I jump out with my old VHS video camera and I start running after them. They're in frame for several seconds. I think, you know what, I want to get closer to these guys so I can get them on film better. I stop the camera and I start running after them again. Right at that moment, they disappeared before my eyes. There was no explanation. I mean, there were no signs of reenactment. There were no crowds, no cars, nothing like that. There's no way they could have gotten to the tree line that quickly. And, you know, it was just unexplainable. And I've been wanting answers ever since. We uh, put the VHS tape on, and I was blown away. And it really sparked my interest in the paranormal at that point. Two years ago, Brad and Barry formed a group called Everyday Paranormal. Paranormal activity happens to everyday people in everyday places. This is not something that's taboo, that's mystical, that's witchcraft or anything like that. My philosophy is you have to use facts, you have to use science. So that's where we come in. <laughs> Yeah. Good news, man. Got us access to the Shreveport Municipal Auditorium. Tons of claims. Got footsteps, apparitions, shadows, voices. There's claims of a lot of stuff dealing with music, a lot of stuff on stage. Johnny Cash and all those guys. And I, I know that's where Elvis actually got his professional start. I want to find out what's fueling the paranormal fire there. What makes those ghosts stay in the Municipal Auditorium? But we need to get the lab going. We need to get it to Shreveport. It's a long drive. We need to get it going pretty quick. All right, sweet. All right. Hey, check this out. We're going to Shreveport, Louisiana, so I need to make sure that these laptops are all ready to go. I need to make sure SmartBoard is all set up with software. So I need you two guys to be in charge of tech for this investigation. The EMF data loggers. We're going to take everything. We're going to spread that electronic net into place. You know, I want to find evidence. We're going to try to catch all the stuff that's happening up there. All right. Katie, make sure that you have your cameras. Make sure you have your batteries all set up. Also do a little research. See if you can find anything about Shreveport Municipal Auditorium. OK. In a forgotten corner of Shreveport, Louisiana, lies a brooding monument to the city's storied past, the Shreveport Municipal Auditorium. Though its doors are still open, it's been years since the venue's glory days, when it hosted the Louisiana Hayride Radio Show, introducing the world to Johnny Cash, Hank Williams, and the king himself, Elvis Presley. But some say the spirits from the venue's glory days still roam these halls. First thing we want to do is meet with Teresa. She's kind of the unofficial historian of the Shreveport Municipal Auditorium. Uh, we want to see if she has blueprints. We want to get claims of activity from her. Just meet with her and see what's going on here. 
One thing I really wanted to ask you was, it's all true about Elvis, about he got a start here, yes, he the did. whole nine. Elvis got his start here, it was 1954, and in fact, in one of the rooms you'll probably see later in the Elvis Presley dressing room, there's actually a copy of the uh, contract he signed with the Louisiana Hayride. Any apparitions or any sightings in, the, in that area? People have heard stuff. On this side, though, someone actually saw a shadow of a man that was leaning in the hallway here one night when they were locking up. Visible apparitions can appear in shadow form. They are considered in paranormal lore to be physical manifestations of the dead. I have had experiences in the balcony over the ballroom, in the basement, in this very hallway in the dressing room areas. I heard voices in this alcove, and there was nobody here. And I've seen the door appear at the end of the hallway on the balcony, open and close by itself. Man, Shreveport, there's a lot of stuff going on here. We gotta get cameras out, we gotta get wires set, get a game plan down. I mean, we got all kinds of crap to do. Well, let's get it done. Guys, this place is huge. We actually have the blueprints, and we're going to kind of show you where we're going to be investigating some of the activity and some camera placement, some audio placement. Paranormal investigators believe that spirits manifest as energy, which can take the following forms. Visible apparitions, spikes in electromagnetic fields, or EMF, drastic changes in temperature, noises, and sometimes as electronic voice phenomena, or EVP, which are audio recordings of voices that are generally below the threshold of human hearing. These are the types of evidence the team is looking to collect. Let's start with the main stage area. So what we're gonna do, we have some activity on the stage. We wanna open up that curtain. We wanna put an infrared camera here. There's a door up here on the balcony. It supposedly moves by itself. It's been witnessed by several people at the same time. We want to do audio work in the Elvis Presley dressing room. There's a lot of audio there, so that's what we want to try to capture. Out in the hallway, that little box right there is a fire hose. They actually saw an apparition, a shadow, leaning up against that wall right there. That's the areas we're going to hit. Let's go ahead and run all of our cameras okay. there, get our audio going, and we're going to get this thing going. That's good. Great. To make sure no corner of the building goes unmonitored, the Ghost Lab team cast an electronic net over the entire building. You know, some people say, you know, ghost hunting is all glamorous and fun, but you gotta do a lot of grunt work too. So uh, that's what we're doing now. Pain in the butt. This is the door that opens and closes, right? Shut good. Yeah. The team wires the building from top to bottom with surveillance equipment, audio recorders, and digital data loggers. The data loggers take continuous snapshots of the environmental conditions, including temperature, humidity, and electromagnetic fields, or EMF. The team can then analyze those back in the lab. Barry the pair lab. Lab, go ahead. The Ghost Lab is the team's mobile command center, and it's their home base during their investigations. We're gonna get baseline readings. Baseline readings are controlled readings taken when there's no paranormal activity happening. Any difference to those readings could be paranormal. Brad Lab, got your baseline EMF readings. Number one, 0.32. Number two, 0.3. Once these are established, the team can track any unexpected changes which could represent paranormal activity. One of the claims in this area of the building is they saw a shadow of a person sitting right here, foot up, leaning against the wall. So anytime there's some sort of apparition, we do what we call a linear sweep. A linear sweep involves placing data loggers in a straight line down a hall or stairwell. Come on down, like about four feet right there. Right here. Data loggers are devices that uh, take readings uh, for EMF and temperature every two seconds. Uh, if an entity moves through a room, this will allow us to track its movement. Meanwhile, Steve Harris and Hector will try to gather EVPs, or electronic voice phenomena, in Elvis's dressing room. EVP session number one for Steve Harris, Hector, in uh, Elvis's uh, dressing room. And we are going to see if we can communicate with him or somebody else by asking some questions. Brad and Barry move on to the ballroom, where the balcony door allegedly opens and closes. 
This is where the door on the upstairs balcony moves by itself. Uh, we're gonna conduct some EVP sessions in here and see if we can uh, stir something up. To conduct an EVP session means that audio recorders are running and doing uh, several different things to call out whatever entity might be there to try to get disembodied voices on tape. EVP session, upstairs ballroom. Now, if you're up here, I shouldn't have to be asking you questions. Water fountain turning on. Did you hear that? Huh? Who's up here? I heard sound coming from this side. Hello? Someone in here? You need to go up there to that door? Mm -hmm. Well, don't open the door, just watch it. It's open. You're kidding. The door is open. Dude. No. Was it open earlier? No, it wasn't. We're facing the other way. I'm staying up here. Down. Anybody up here? You just opened the door? The door's open. The door is open, dude. Was it open earlier? No, it wasn't. Door is open. <laughs> I'm standing on the upstairs balcony, and uh, we heard a knocking sound. wasn't sure what it was. We kind of went into this little hallway that leads up to the balcony, and uh, lo and behold, this door is open. We need to confirm that that door was closed. Do you remember the doors being closed or open? The They're balcony? They're closed. They're closed? Yeah. All of them were closed? Yeah. I was up there. They were all closed. Shut good? Yeah. That's what I thought. One of them was wide I open. I can guarantee it. Well, we didn't capture the door opening, but we do know this. The door was for sure closed. We know that there were no drafts, no wind, anything like that that would cause the door to open. So what we're going to do now is we're going to take the EMF data loggers and just to see if anything strange happened on those during that time. Oh, yeah, it's jumping, dude. What are you getting? 1.7s, 1.8s. The data loggers are now showing EMF readings six times higher than the baselines. A light up above your head. That's a 0.4. That's not causing it. High EMF or electromagnetic fields can be caused by several things. By computer screens, power lines, uh, or anything that has electrical currents to them. If there are areas that have high EMF but none of those things around, uh, that leads us to believe that it is paranormal activity. This is exactly where they saw the shadow too. We're getting spikes right here. The Ghost Lab team believes they've already captured several pieces of paranormal evidence. Now they need to review their recent audio recordings to see if they've got any EVPs or electronic voice phenomena. All right, Ashley, so uh, tell me what you got here on your audio file. Over in the section near the fire hose. That's the same place we got the other one. That place is that hallway's hot. active or something. Definitely. Well, uh, we'll take a listen. This, this is actually the original file. Oh, I see what you're saying. <laughs> Right yeah, there. right there. Highlight that part and loop it. They saw the light. I would say that's a Class A. A Class A EVP is an electronic voice phenomenon that is clearly audible without digital enhancement. It's almost like an intelligent response. They saw the light. <laughs> <laughs> In the paranormal world, investigators believe EVPs, or electronic voice phenomena, are the voices of disembodied spirits. But the Ghost Lab team will not just take them at face value. They return to the location where the EVP was recorded 
to attempt a baseline test. What we're gonna do is we're gonna get a baseline EVP. Okay. We're gonna try to match that voice as best you can. We're gonna take it back down to the Paralab and we'll compare the levels to show the difference between you know, what a, a human voice that we know looks like and, and, a, and a, you know, a disembodied voice. Okay. So. Okay, and... They saw the light. A little lower. Right. They saw the light. That was, I think that was, that was pretty close. Yeah, that's perfect. Okay. Let's take this back down to the Paralab and we'll yeah, measure the levels. Okay. All right. This is the original EVP. This is the waveform. Unenhanced, unamplified, this is it. You can see how it's a little bit low on the frequency level down here. There's, it's, it's not real audible. Mm -hmm. um, now... Let me, let me hear real quick. All right. <laughs> All right, now check this out. This is the actual waveform of what me and Steve Harris did. Big difference. Right there. Look how pronounced oh, yeah. that is as a human voice. It's coming from Steve's voice of a natural hearing range. But watch this. You're going to be able to tell that the voice is almost the same cadence and the same level. This Steve's pretty good at EVPs. It's a, <laughs> enough. You know, here's actual data that's showing how these things behave and what they look like compared to a regular human voice. Now you kind of refer it to like a dog whistle. You know, there's frequencies out there, you know, that we're just not hearing. Well, we have been getting a lot of uh, EVPs in the building. The, the one in particular, they saw the light, seemed to be more intelligent than anything. Uh, now, we, we did a baseline, we tested it. It did occur on a different frequency than a regular human voice. Now, there is such a thing out there in the quantum physics world called parallel universes. Uh, now, I'm no scientist, I'm no quantum physicist, so we need to get a hold of someone like that to talk about parallel universes and how these factor into this case. Parallel universe theory developed through the study of subatomic particles that appear to be in more than one place at a time. According to the theory, the known universe is one of an infinite number of universes, each slightly different and each with its own rules and reality. We're trying to think of some sort of theory dealing with the past, dealing with the different dimensions. That Back in the 50s, this place was just rocking and rolling, literally. Well, there's lots of interest in the meaning of time and the idea of parallel universe. There's lots of concrete work being done in the physics community. But when we study the universe, we keep being pulled into the idea that what we can see most directly is not all there is. There's really a lot more than meets the eye. Is there any possibility that these universes or these different times can actually interact with each other? You know, ultimately, the question is, can you strap them down into the rigorous scientific method? And when push comes to shove, you have to come up with real tests. If you can do it, who knows what you'll find. There's something that I've been working on for a while. It's something that I call era cues, which mm -hmm. is basically what era made the place most popular. Right. When was the energy level the highest? Here, it was like the early 50s. Right. When they had Louisiana Hayride, when Elvis got a start. And you know what we want to do is we want to cue the era, hence the word era cues. Era cues theory, the belief that you can energize spirits of past eras by presenting familiar stimuli, is Brad's paranormal twist on the parallel universe theory. In Shreveport, one of the coolest things that we could do is recreate the environment by bringing a band in there, mm -hmm. playing rockabilly music from the 50s, you know, getting up there and singing. Dude, I'll you volunteer, get a, you I'll you volunteer get myself to do it. Let's coordinate our investigation around the actual band being placed. We have audio, we get video. Anything that we got, just bring the whole arsenal in there. Hopefully, something will manifest during that time and that has to do with that era. That'd be cool. Or right, well, thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you very much. Uh. <laughs> Coming up, Brad puts his Eric Hughes theory to the test. Don't tell me that Come talk to us. But when the energy gets raised, so does the danger. The door just shut. Door just shut, right, so. As you guys know, this place is one of the birthplaces of rock and roll. So what we want to do is raise the energy to this place the way it was back in the early 50s and 60s when this place was jamming out. 
to try to stir up the, the entities of the spirits that are from that era. You have to look at a building and when its energy was the highest. In the case of the Shreveport Municipal Auditorium, you're talking about the, the heyday of, of rock and roll. That is what defined the Shreveport Municipal Auditorium. Therefore, if we play the music from that time, we hope to bring out the entities that are familiar with that era. We have investigators all throughout the building right now. Some of them are behind the doors, some of them are up in the balcony. And what we're doing is while you guys are playing, we're gonna be checking to see if anything's happening. And let me ask you one thing. When you're done playing your song, silence. We're gonna look, we're gonna listen, we're gonna film, take photographs, but just let it for about 30 seconds and I'll tell you, go ahead and go and we'll, go, we'll move on to the next one. All right guys, take it away. Someone here? Where are you at? Move something. Make us believers. What's your reading on the temperature wise? 81.6. Come on out. Yeah. Got it. Let's go! Do something big! Door just shut by itself. What's going on? The door just shut. Door just shut by itself. Which one? This one, right here. Did everybody see it? Yeah, oh, I seen it. Hector was standing right by Hector was right here, here and I was back there. How did it shut? It, it, it just said, like something pushed it. You gotta pull it past the lip. So like watch. So watch, fill the lip, fill the lip. Let go. That wasn't rolling. Yeah, you gotta really, you gotta really pull it. it takes pretty good pressure. Yeah, it does, because it's a heavy door. All right. Suddenly you just hear the slam on, on right behind your back. It's just, it was kind of a rush. I think uh, we're in a hot spot, as we call it. Experiment's going real well, but what I want to do is I want to get up there and bring the energy up high. Test one, test one. I really feel that what defines the municipal auditorium is the rockabilly style of like Elvis Presley. Maybe we can bring the parallel universes closer together by playing more in that style. Anyone down here? Don't tell me that you love me. Don't tell me no more lies. I know you're set on leave. Now it's at zero. Okay. You shut that door. Shut it again. I dare you. Well, thank you very much. Come on, shut that door again. Come talk to us. Come touch one of us. No, I didn't touch you. Dude, somebody just touched Katie. No, I didn't touch you, I'm serious. Somebody just touched Katie. Coming up, the team analyzes their evidence. We're talking about Eric Hughes' theory. It was an EVP fest in there. Before moving on to what's known as the most haunted home in America. Where else can you use a real-life haunted house to test your theories? Will spirits from a dark past await their arrival? Did you just hear that? It was their home first. And most of them are going to be pissed off. We 
Where'd you get touched at? On the Katie? arm. Somebody just poked her. Poked her? Yeah. I thought it was Ashley. I was standing right there by the shower. And I had already moved and they towards just, that. It was like, like pushed it, like just. That was like hard, this? Katie. No, it was like, like a, like that. We're talking about air accused theory. Uh, this place, it has really supported the theory. It was an EVP fest in there. Personal experiences, buttload. Obviously, any kind of experimentation, you have to have lots and lots of data to be able to say that something works or not. The air accused. There's something to it, man. There's something to it. All right, Shreveport, we got a lot of good stuff, but the main categories, we got EVPs, a lot of personal experiences. It was right here in that hallway, right off stage. The other place uh, was up in the balcony. Was it open earlier? No, it wasn't. We're facing the other way. It wasn't open up here. now. Door's open. <laughs> the place was freaking haunted. I mean, what else can you say? The things we've learned, the experiences we've gone with the air cues and how to do it, we're gonna take this information and we're gonna go somewhere and apply it again. Let's get the hell out of here. Rock the house. The Ghost Lab team travels 220 miles southwest to the Myrtles Plantation, notorious for high levels of alleged paranormal activity. The plantation has a dark past one full of tragedy, disease, and death. It was built in 1796 by David Bradford, who was once marked for death by George Washington himself for his role in the Whiskey Rebellion in 1794. Another owner, Judge Clark Woodruff, is rumored to have cut off a slave's ear for eavesdropping and later had her executed. The condemned slave, Chloe, is rumored to still be haunting these grounds. Her image was allegedly captured here in a photograph from 1995. The phenomenon of ghost photography is as old as photography itself. Many historic images that supposedly captured apparitions have been debunked. But some, like the Chloe photo and this one, the Brown Lady of Raynham, have yet to be fully explained. The team has investigated the plantation before. They've captured many unexplained phenomena, including this EVP. And what they believe to be a shadowy apparition caught on tape. Here we are, Myrtles. Here we are again. Super Bowl of paranormal. You know, this place is perfect for the air accused experimentation that we've been working on. I mean, where else can you use a real-life haunted house to test your theories? When you go to the Myrtles, if you want to find out a lot about the history and the paranormal claims, the person to talk to is Miss Hester. She's the caretaker, and she's had lots of experiences over the years. So Myrtles Plantation, most haunted home in America? America's most haunted house. And, you know, I don't like it when people kind of joke about it or whatever, because I feel like it was their home first, and it's disrespectful. You can sense things around you even though you don't see them. I've even heard uh, hello there. I've also been tugged on so many times the way a child will do when they need to tell you something. And the cry of the children can happen anytime. We've even had guests tell us that they've gone to the door of Ruff and Sterling to see if they could help the person in there with their baby. The baby was crying, only to find out a lot of times no one even had that room. You've heard things, you've felt things tug you. Have you ever seen something? I have so many times I remember seeing a man in uniform. What's the story behind that? It's always a man uh, fully in gray. He has a hat on and he seems to be very tall. But by the time I get there, he's gone. Ms. Hester mentioned that one of the apparitions here was a man in gray. Now, the Confederate soldiers during the Civil War wore gray uniforms. We happened to be in there and that one time and we get something that says colonel like it's addressing a colonel and aren't you afraid two different voices colonel aren't you afraid it's right off the main stairs in the foyer 
this is where we got that uh, the colonel, aren't you afraid? Which is sweet because there's a tie to civil war, there's a tie to soldiers. We're gonna do air cues, big time. Upstairs and the bedrooms where all the children are said to play and so let's go check it out. Ruffin Sterling room, guests say that they can feel kids jumping on the bed. They also say that they hear the sounds of laughter with kids all up in this area. This is the William Winters room. In this room, or actually the, both these rooms, now going further, this whole place up here is where all the kids stayed. Um, did you just hear that? Yeah, what was that? This sounded like a kid. Or VP are unexplained voices caught on tape that are audible to the human ear in real time. Getting that voice phenomenon in the house was huge. I mean, it really points to the fact that the Myrtles is really haunted. Uh, but we really want to test out our air accus theory. So I want to call Dr. Sam Hyde. He's going to come in and tell us a little bit about the history of the Myrtles Plantation and how it ties into our air accus. The area where we are now is a really peculiar region in itself. So it has a long history of extraordinary violence. Violence wasn't merely an accepted event, it was an expected event. And here at the Myrtles, we see that happen here as well. What do you mean by that, at the Myrtles? Well, we all know the famous ghost stories about the murders here and everything, but if you get into the Civil War, the rates of violence were simply indescribable. And the people in these communities would have felt it the worst. They came and they intensely shelled these towns. They would burn houses, burn crops, gang raping of women. And you can imagine when things like that happen, it creates a savage response in the local population. Which goes into a lot of paranormal study that very violent and traumatic history seems to leave a, an impression on the environment. So we're trying to do some experiments, and what we're doing, we're calling it air cues. What it is is recreating the past, trying to draw out energy, trying to draw out responses, voices, and whatever evidence we can find. Well, you know, y'all would be the experts in that regard, but what I would say is a certainty that you are going to have bountiful examples of potential spirits around you, and most of them are going to be pissed off. With both the history of the plantation and the evidence that we collected on our past investigations, uh, it really points to the Civil War era. I want to call in our everyday paranormal affiliate in Louisiana to come in and share some of the evidence that they've collected over the years uh, to see if anything points in the same direction. I know that y'all have got some pretty good EVPs from this place. Why don't you tell me a little about what you got here? Well, I think if you go to um, EVP 8B, walking right past the pond, and we're just talking, and we get this clear as a bell. And there was nobody. I mean, nobody out there, just us walking quietly. Let me see. Go on, get to the trees. Go on, get to the trees. Were you just quiet at the time, just walking yeah. around? All right, let's see what else you got here. He's fired two shots with a steamer starting the last one at Fort Sumter from a cannon named Betsy. There's the first. That just sounded like a cannon. Yeah. He's talking about cannons. Oh, sweet. Hang on one second. I got to go back to that. <laughs> that sounded like a damn cannon. He's fired two shots with a steamer starting the last one at Fort Sumter from a cannon named Betsy. Dude, check this out. Ken and Maria, mm -hmm. they came up here and they brought some of their EVPs from some of the times they've been here. The one I was truly impressed with was um, they were out here on the patio and uh, the guy starts talking about the battles, the Civil War, right. and he says, and the cannons and blah, 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 and this thing goes <laughs> So a freaking cannon. Freaking cannon. Oh my God, you just hit on Jeez. the Aracuse thing.
If you really want to test this air accused theory, you have to bring the area back up to its most active level. In Shreveport, we did this by playing rockabilly music, but in this case, the era is the Civil War. So I've asked Dr. Hyde to help us by recording some passages from old Civil War era letters to see if we can restore some of that activity. Is this a simple recorder? I'm just going to place it on the table, just talk in your normal voice, and it'll pick it up. Sounds good. Okay, so uh, we're recording. General Gardner, we have a message from General Pemberton. We are ordered to withdraw within the lines at Port Hudson and to hold it to the last. Courage, my brothers, courage. The Lord remains with us no matter how bad it may look. Coming up, the team begins their second Eric experiment. General Gardner, we have a message. With chilling results. You know what it's doing? It's right here. It's moving this way. It's going crazy. It's moving. Something just f***ing touched me on the back of the head. The Ghost Lab team continues their investigation of Myrtle's plantation, rumored to be the most haunted home in America. Now that night has fallen, they begin to cast their electronic net. There should be two of these. I don't want the cameras to bleed, so if there's any way we can maybe the back in the corner. Three, four. You got it, girls? Okay, yeah, we got it here. Keep going, move left, 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 more board. You got it. Looks good. All right, lights out of here. With the net cast, the team is now ready to begin their Eric Hughes experiment. Sam Hyde did all that Civil War stuff on the voice loop. Yeah, since we got that Colonel EVP in this room, uh -huh. we need to try to link it. So I'm thinking uh, probably right here, like maybe the base of the stairs. Okay. That way we can catch you know, anything coming from here, anything coming from here, and maybe something in there. Um, okay, let's just set it right here in the middle. Where's your recorder? Right, I'm going to put, put mine. Uh, Why don't you put it right out in the middle of the room? Okay, I'll put it right in the center. Is it rolling? Yep. Okay, you ready? Mm -hmm. General Gardner, we have a message from General Pemberton. Bradbury, Foyer. We are ordered to withdraw Greenhouse. within the lines at Port Hudson and to hold it to the last. The 9th Louisiana Partisan Rangers are clamoring to leave. He added another note as well. It reads, may God have mercy on us all. It's been a long war. Courage, my brothers, courage. The Lord remains with us no matter how bad it may look. I need an officer quick. The Union's moving through. Colonel, you here? Dude. Oh my God, I have got a cold. Someone's opened a refrigerator behind me right now. Hey, call them, get a gun in here right now. Barry, Paralab. Hi, Barry. Bring a uh, thermometer in here ASAP into the foyer stairwell. It is ice cold right here, dude. Are you on the stairwell? Katie, my arm, my arm is like numb cold right now. Whatever it is, my hand is sticking right in it. Do you feel it? Yeah, I do. It's like it's standing right here on the step. Right now, it's ice cold on my face. 62.5. It's not 60 degrees in here. 60, 53 degrees. Dude, because I feel it right here. It's like a pillar of cold. Crazy. You know what it's doing? It's right here. It's moving this way. It's going crazy. It's moving. Something just touched me on the back of the head. Coming up and touch me again. baseline temperature of that room was 78 degrees. That cold spot was 12 degrees colder than the rest of the room. Now, there's no reason for that. It's in the middle of the summer. The AC wasn't even on. Uh, I wasn't even standing near any vents. Now, when we get a temperature drop like that and we can trace it through a room, as a paranormal investigator, that's exciting stuff. My battery's drained. Let's go ahead and go back and review these. You should have been on the stairs when it hit, and right on my back it was like someone just opened a freezer door on your back, and you could put your hand through it. The uh, theory behind cold spots is simple. It's when an entity tries to manifest itself, it uses energy around it. When it uses up all the energy, it appears as a cold spot or a temperature fluctuation. 
I got one. What's that? I think it says, why can't you help? Remember when Katie came in to give the temperature gun? On the stairwell, when we were feeling the cold breeze? Mm -hmm. Listen to it. Move it this way, it's warm. You move it right, you feel it? Yeah, I do. I start talking, but you can definitely hear the, the, why can't you help me? There might be a me in there, but it's definitely a why can't you help. We were doing the air cue on the Civil War stuff. Right. This would have been before I got touched. So if you got that, and it's almost like, hey, I feel the cold spot right here, and it's like something it's grabbing grab me, like you. something's trying to get your attention in there. Definitely. That's intelligent like a mofo. The EVP that we got, this is somehow uh, tied to the history of the building. There was a lot of strife and turmoil with the Civil War. There's also been murders in the house. We wanted to see if through air cues we could bring up the past. Uh, and it seemed to work. I mean, it, it really did. In EVPs, we got them here. Personal experience is a whole bunch of them. In fact, Brad had a personal experience. Yeah, that was when we were on the stairs, and you can actually feel that cold spot moving up and down. Oh my God, someone's opened a refrigerator behind me right now. You can put your arm through it, it was so cold. And not only that, but we can actually record it with a temperature dip. Right, plus the, the, the EVP we got, why can't you help me? Same time frame as a cold spot, so it's all wrapped up together. Merle's Plantation, we know personally that it's a freaking haunted place. It's a haunted house. <laughs> <laughs> for the Kling brothers, the results of this week's investigations represent an exciting case study for their Eric Hughes theory. But their quest to truly understand paranormal phenomena may have just begun. Remember, this is the way you do a paranormal investigation. In any kind of scientific method, in any kind of experimentation, you have to have lots and lots of data. We're trying to prove the theory. That's the goal, whether it takes a couple of investigations or several years. That's what we're working for. I mean, I'm sick of always hearing, you know, well, you know, the paranormal will never be proved. Well, you know, if they, they told the Wright brothers that, you know, people will never fly, you know, that wouldn't have happened. You know, I really think that we're on to something and all the science that we're doing and to actually put it in the practice and see it work, I mean, this is gonna blow the paranormal world out of the water.